Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about anamorphics. Cue the flares. Hey guys, welcome to Filmora Pro. My name's Johnny, and today I wanted to demystify anamorphic lenses and flares. You may have heard about people using anamorphic lenses in feature films, or maybe you've heard about how they can help you achieve that film look. Or better yet, maybe you just heard about their infamous lens flares. So today I'm going to give some background info on the history of anamorphic lenses, and then we're going to go into how you can pull off the anamorphic look in camera without breaking the bank. And finally I'm going to show you how you can pull off this look entirely in Filmora Pro. In short, anamorphic lenses were made to allow widescreen films to be shot on 4x3 film. These lenses would squeeze more information into that 4x3 footprint, and then later it would be stretched back out into a nice widescreen image. This was a way more efficient use of the film in camera rather than just cropping a widescreen shape out of a 4x3 image. As a result, a lot of feature films were shot in this new format called Cinemascope, with an aspect ratio of about 2.39 to 1. With the advent of digital film cameras and larger film formats, using anamorphic lenses became less and less necessary to get a widescreen image. But some of the visual side effects of using anamorphic lenses have become synonymous with the look of cinema. These artifacts associated with anamorphic lenses often include the oval bokeh, some barrel distortion around the edges, and of course the infamous horizontal lens flares. There's also this weird effect you get when rotating anamorphic lenses around, where everything gets all weird and stretched and distorted. Hold on to that thought later, or skip to the timecode right here, and we'll show you how you can achieve this look right in Filmora Pro. Like most cinema lenses, proper anamorphic lenses are expensive, so they're often just rented out for large-scale productions. But that hasn't stopped indie filmmakers, oh no. There's a few workarounds you can use to get that same look in camera. So today we're going to look at a few alternatives that you can use to get that same anamorphic look in your camera. I've worked on a handful of music video projects myself, and I often use the Panasonic LA7200 anamorphic adapter, which we're actually shooting this entire video on right now. A few companies still make adapters like this one today, but they tend to be really finicky, require a lot of research, not to mention they're still really expensive. So today we're going to take a look at something a lot less expensive and a lot easier to use. This is the Cinemorph Filter by VidAtlantic. This is a filter that screws onto the front of your lens, just like this. They work really well with fast primes like this Rokinon 85mm T1.5. Starting at $65, these are a way more affordable way to get into anamorphics. They can give you the really nice oval shaped bokeh, as well as those nice horizontal lens flares. The main thing to keep in mind is that you want to use these filters with prime lenses, not zoom lenses, usually 50mm and tighter. There's a full list of compatibility over on their website. I'll leave a link in the description below. So now that we've taken a look at getting the anamorphic look in camera, let's now look at how you can get it right in Filmora Pro. Filmora Pro has a handful of tools that allow you to get that anamorphic look in post. In fact, we saved a preset that you can download, link in the description. But here's how you can put it together from scratch. First, if we want to emulate the lens distortions we get with anamorphics, we can start with the action cam lens distort effect. We only want to subtly dial this in. Typically, the wider the shot, the more you can get away with. For this effect, let's set the FOV to about 15. Next, let's add a slight vignette. I'll use the vignette exposure effect to bring down the exposure to about negative 18. Under the stretch heading, let's decrease the vertical scale to 0.7 and increase the horizontal scale to about 1.3. With anamorphic lenses, the areas closer to the edges typically get soft and swirly. We can subtly emulate this by dragging the radial blur effect onto our clip and dialing the effect way down to about 0.3. Next, let's add the lens flare. There are a few effects that you can use to get this look, like light flares, which allows you to manually create lens flares and position them. But my favorite is anamorphic lens flare, since it automatically creates flares based on the brightness values of your shots. So to begin, let's crank up the threshold all the way to about 0.9, which means only the brightest light values will create flares. 
and bring up the intensity enough that we start seeing flares. If your shot doesn't have any bright point sources, you might not want to add this effect at all, but I've got this light up here that I want to start seeing flares on. Let's set the number of streaks to 2. Under streak 1, let's set the orientation to horizontal, and make sure the alignment is set to center. Let's increase the length enough that our flare spans the width of the frame. Next, let's make sure horizontal and vertical pivot options are not checked. Under Colorize, let's choose a nice cool blue and crank up the amount. And let's tweak that blue a bit. Next, for Streak 2, let's use similar settings as Streak 1. The main difference this time is that we'll dial down our intensity so it's a lot less bright than Streak 1. Let's set our alignment to center, and we'll check both the horizontal and vertical pivot boxes. And once again set our color to a cool blue. Finally, to complete this look, let's make this footage truly widescreen by adding a letterbox effect on our footage. And there we have it! Remember that trippy anamorphic roll effect from earlier? You can emulate this effect right in Filmora Pro with the quad warp effect. Let's enable keyframing on all of our corner points by clicking on these circles. Let's move to another point on the clip. And with each of these parameters selected, click the diamond icon up here to create another set of keyframes. Next, let's drag one set of these keyframes to the beginning of our clip and zoom out of our viewer so that we can see well outside of the frame. Next thing we'll do is drag the upper left and lower right corners outwards. Imagine a line running between those two corner points and drag those corner points out along those lines. Next, let's take our other set of keyframes we made and drag them to the end of the clip. This time dragging the upper right and lower left corner points. Now we'll get a trippy misaligned anamorphic look. I find doing lens flares in post-production never looks as good as capturing your own lens flares in camera. However, it does give you a lot more options that you wouldn't have on set, especially if you don't have the budget to use one of these guys on your shoot. That said, here's a comparison of a few different methods to get that anamorphic look. Are anamorphic effects going to make your project automatically more cinematic? Uh, not necessarily. The thing is, there's a lot of other factors to consider. That said, it's a really cool effect that I recommend you add to your arsenal if you can. Anyway, did you have anything else you wanted to learn how to do in Filmora Pro? We're actually doing a Q&A video in the near future, so make sure to leave your questions in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video, and remember, there's no limit to what you can create.